450, I don't know, 445, 450, and that's full power. Good morning. So this is um, an overview of my new vacuum chamber. So I started out with this aluminum dodecagon. It's 12-sided and it came from a dumpster. And it's designed for high vacuum applications so it has all of these vacuum ports, one on each of the 12 sides. And um, I have a variety of different caps for them, including these two high voltage insulation caps. Um, I have a couple other pass throughs, um, primary vacuum takeoffs. So this is a small copper one. There's also one that's, you know, it's the large version for high flow through volumes. And then this one's unique. It's, it's actually a, uh, as you can see, it kind of transmits motion through a lead screw through a pair of bellows. The bellows are actually the thing that that flexes but also maintains vacuum. And um, it was originally designed for some sort of fluid flow or pressure flow. I had to cap them off, I TIG welded them shut, and now instead I'm using it to move an electrode, which you can see there. And um, the seals are all maintained here and at this joint to that joint. Uh, I made these equivalent uh, shaped pieces of acrylic. They're one and a half inches thick, made from plexiglass. I had a bunch of really old stuff that I dumpstered a long time back. It was in good shape. It wasn't UV degraded. degraded. And um, drilled 12 holes only ended up using six because 12 holes per size a lot to drill and tap. Um, the quarter 20 bolts, quarter 20 tap threads in the aluminum block. Um, you can see the hole there. I actually ended up drilling all the way through, but really didn't need to. This is like roughly three inches of aluminum here. And the seal is maintained just around the face of the aluminum. Here you can see a little bit of squeeze out of the silicone caulking that I used. Um, and it's pretty neat because you can see right through the acrylic, you can see where your bond line is complete when you apply the silicone sealant. So squeeze it down and it squeezes out. You can see air pockets as they form, if, if any form. And in my case, I got really lucky. It's all flat. Oh wow, check out that pressure. And there's 18 inches of mercury. in here. Darn. Alright, so I believe I have resolved the issue with this fitting here. So now, when I turn it on, it's 20 inches of mercury. So that's 25 and a half inches of mercury. I noticed that it dips a bit, so maybe it's still leaking somewhere. That's 25 almost exactly. And as you can see, you can still move contact electrodes back and forth from outside the vacuum. Okay, so um, here I have a Variac from 0 to 100%, which is 115 volts in the United States, 0 to 120, 120 is nominal for electrical stuff. So um, then I have this 3 kilovolt neon sign transformer. It's ancient, but it works. Uh, I don't actually know what the full output is typically, so I'm going to rig up a voltmeter to the output of it. Um, but I won't be running it at 3,000 volts because I know that at 3,000 volts it could definitely jump that gap. Uh, actually, it could probably jump a gap more like a quarter to half inch. 
this a little bit much. So right about there, uh, right about there, I know that this 3000 volt can jump in um, normal air, especially once ionized. Once ionized, it can go a full three quarter inch, um, just about. And um, so we're going to start out at the full, I don't know, it's about seven eighths of an inch in distance between the pin here and this pin here. All right, so we're going to start off here at atmospheric pressure, and um, I'm just going to do a dry run with the neon sign transformer to see how far it jumps. Okay, here's full 3,000 volts or so, and the arc should initiate here pretty soon. So that's an eighth of an inch. There we go. So looks like it jumped at about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little less. And you can see once the air is ionized, it, it jumps quite a, quite a bit further. Three thirty seconds, and then as I pull it out, arcs about a quarter inch, and it starts to destabilize. That's three eighths or so, and it stops. Self extinguishes. Okay, so now we're going to do it at vacuum, and I'm going to let the vacuum run during this. You probably won't be able to hear me. But the goal is going to be, I'm going to turn the, the voltage up until I get an arc that jumps this gap here, which is the full length that I can jump using the current setup without shortening things. Disconnect the multimeter for this one since I don't know how high it's going to go. There's 25 inches of mercury, or 22 and a half. I'm going to increase voltage. Whoa, look at this. So it actually turned into an arc lamp. Looks like the uh, it just ionizes between the two poles. I'm right around 15% of full 120 volt AC in. So this is 20% of 3,000 volts or so. Or hanging steady at that pressure, and as I increase more, looks like I start getting more ionization all over the place. It's really pretty though. It's probably ultraviolet light, so I probably shouldn't be looking at this, but um, and uh, I'm going to keep increasing it. I've got ionization around the entire tube, around the entire length of that electrode is really cool. Um, super bright right there at the tip of that screw. Not so bright elsewhere. And that's 100% right there. Jeez, that's pretty. Um, kind of sparkling, so maybe I might be uh, doing some some sputtering actually right now. Might be removing some metal from the electrode in the process of ionizing it. Turning it back down to zero. Um, there you go. So now let's find out what that voltage is right there. Okay, multimeter is on. Pressure is still hanging there at the 22 and a half or so. And we're going to increase voltage here slowly. Two hundred and fifty. 300, 350, 400, 450, 400 actually. So it seems to jump a lot whenever it starts to initiate the arc. So it's like 450 right now. And then the moment it hits and initiates, which is like 460, 464, 474. There's, so right there, it jumps back down to 400. 
there's a pretty strong humming noise here. Not really sure what that is. And it's not from the transformer like I would expect. So right at 400 volts, I get that arc length, that gap. And I'll measure that afterwards. We'll take it apart and figure that out. Going to close up. See if this works. Let me turn off the lights too. Alright, here's what the light's off. This is that uh, 400 volt or so across about a three quarter inch. And hopefully you guys can see this. Jeez, that's awesome. I'm going to increase the voltage again. So this is... Huh. So it doesn't increase linearly. It seems like the ionization tries to hold it constant. Like I'm at 405 right now. It was at 388 for a second. I'm at 408. I'm just pumping more current into it, I guess. And uh, 420. 425. 430. Four fifty, I don't know, four forty-five, four fifty, and that's full power. So for whatever reason, it has to stay at the same voltage. So this must be some ionizing potential to the vacuum. It must be a constant of some sort. Uh, four sixty, yeah, it's hanging at four. Oh, cool! Look, the nut just engaged. That's really cool. So whatever air in there must be ionizing because it just started encompassing the rest of this area. Um, 440, 441, geez. And you know, it's supposed to be producing 3000 volts, but um, apparently in the vacuum, the transformer just supplies more current. It doesn't, it's not able to supply higher voltage because the ionizing gap prevents it from reaching the full voltage.